Hey guys, what's up? It's Power Bang. Uh, I wanted to talk to you today about upgrading your walls, why it's important, when to do it, how to do it, and to talk a little bit about the method I use to upgrade my base so it is as efficient as possible and I spend my resources upgrading my base versus giving my resources away to upgrade someone else's. What I mean by that is if you'll look at my base, I've got some level 10 walls starting around the core here and the rest of the base primarily is level 9. Um, I've got a few segments on the outside of the base that are still level 8 and I get asked all the time why is it that I haven't finished my level 9 walls and I'm already started on my level 10s. Well the answer to that is very simple. I like to have a spot at the end of the day when I have um, some resources remaining um, to dump them. I want to get rid of my resources so that I am not an attractive raid target. I want people to visit my base, see absolutely no loot, and click the next button. Or I want them to visit my base, try to attack me, and I lose very, very, very minimal resources, whatever's in my collectors. And uh, that's typically nothing because I'm online more often than I am not online. So uh, that is that is why I have left some outlets, I guess, for resources in my level 8 walls. So if you look at the price, uh, they are 1 million resources, either gold or elixir, each to upgrade. Um, the level 9s to upgrade those to level 10, it's going to be 3 million of one of the uh, one resource or the other. So it's far more expensive, three times more expensive to upgrade to a level 10 wall than it is to upgrade to a level 9 wall. Uh, what that means is you will actually, as a Town Hall 9, hit the loot cap of it's roughly 2.9 million resources. So if you've got 2.9 million gold in your storages, uh, you can get rated for 350,000 uh, gold, I believe. So... Um, that means you can be hit for as the maximum possible in your storages, yet you still can't afford to buy one wall piece. Um, and I don't like that. So rather than upgrade 100% to level 9 walls, I've left some outlets uh, at level 8. And what this has allowed me to do is I raid all day and I buy uh, three or four lava walls, the level 10s. And, you know, at the, you know, it's not a common you know even denominator there in the resource department so if you look right now at my resources I've got 1.5 million gold 1.2 million elixir and that will allow me to buy two level 8 wall pieces I can buy one with elixir one with gold and that will leave me with 500,000 gold and 200,000 elixir I've got a couple more level 9s done for the day and I left my base with hardly any resources to pick off so an attacker that you know hits my base they're gonna get hardly anything from it or they're gonna click next now conversely if I had upgraded to, to level nines and I didn't have any outlet for my resources at the end of the day that means I would have to have at least three million of one resource or the other to buy a wall piece now more often than not um, at the end of the day if I see that I have to get two million resources I'm not gonna bother to do another you know five six seven raids to get that um, get that cash in to, to make those wall you know buys so uh, you're kind of just holding on to the resources and hoping for the best when it comes to getting raided so that is why I have left my walls in kind of three tiers and this can be any tier you know you could have your walls at level five six and seven or six seven and eight seven eight and nine um, it works just the same you're just gonna be able to buy um, more wall pieces and get closer to zero. Um, the next morning, rather than you know being broke, whatever's in your collectors, you should be able to collect, and that will help you um, afford an army, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to start farming again the next day. Uh, you just want to make sure that before you go to bed, that you buy enough to you know you basically queue up an army and then queue up the army after that um, so it should be stalled in your barracks that way you're able to get as rid of as many resources as possible and then any excess that you have go ahead and sink it into your lowest level walls so that will get you as close to zero as you reasonably can get and then start the process over the next day so where you put these walls um, you want your highest level walls in the core of the base um, I've got my level 10s going around the core, um, the level 9s are in the second level, and then the third level, if you don't have them at, at uh, you know, your mid-level wall level, um, 
those will be your your lowest level walls and there's a lot of debate as to well you want your highest level walls on the outside of the base you know that's where people are going to hit first you might as well weaken them etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, that is wrong you want your highest level walls in the core here's why um, when you attack a base if you're if you know whether it's war whether it's uh, you know farming you typically have enough wall breakers to manage the opening part of the attack so say you attack a base um, it's very easy to control wall breakers and, and make them go where you want them to go on the opening salvo so to speak where it gets a little bit tricky is trying to weave those same wall breakers uh, in through one wall opening to hit another wall opening and then do the same thing into the third level and and get those uh, troops that you're sending in access to say the core of the base that's very difficult to do and it's also difficult to guide them through you know the maze of obstacles and defenses that are going to be trying to kill those wall breakers so rather than uh, having a beefy outer level that's going to be destroyed nearly instantly um, there's also jump spells that are more popular these days as well you see those a lot used on the outside of the base to um, access strategic obstacles uh, you know the, the archer queen for example is a very popular um, target for a jump spell to try to access and then you'll see um, jump spells used in the second tier of bases quite a bit after wall breakers have broken through the first layer of walls jump spells will be used to access say the core of the base and try to help funnel troops to where they're supposed to be going so if you have your highest level walls in the core everything that I just spoke about you know how easy it is to get troops to the town hall um, in order to three-star your base and come away with ultimate victory they need to also get those same troops out of the core and if the core has extremely high level walls um, that's gonna be very difficult to do if they're not able to break through somehow or they didn't have a jump spell for exit from the core um, the difference in in hit points on these walls is pretty huge if you look at a level 8 wall you'll notice that the hit points is only 3,000 now level 8 walls are typically the first time uh, you're starting to be concerned with walls as far as um, oh those are you know an actual obstacle rather than something just a few barbarians can just go bang through um, level 8 walls have 3,000 uh, hit points now level 9 quite a bit quite a big step up at 4,000 hit points so that's you know 33 percent more than you know the one level below um, the level 10s however that's when things start getting serious that's these are no joke 5,500 hit points so that's nearly double uh, a level 8 wall and then uh, level 11 walls which is the max you can achieve in the game and those are only accessible at town hall 10 um, those are 7,000 hit points so that is um, pretty pretty insane you'll notice here um, the wall level 11 uh, 7,000 hit points now at town hall 10 you can do the same thing start with your zap walls the level 11s have the majority be lava and then a few town hall 9 um, Lego walls remaining and that could be your outlet um, for dumping resources at night obviously um, that takes a pretty hardcore farmer to be you know farming level 11 walls um, but it's been done and it will be done again so that is kind of my philosophy for walls um, stagger their levels so that you have a place to get rid of your resources um, you want the majority to be a certain level but leave a few at the end of you know your upgrade process um, left at the lower level and then start on the new level and do that around your core first and then you know the inner junctions of your base and then the uh, secondary level of walls um, inside out basically so that's how I do my base um, you know I, I know a lot of others you know approach there similarly um, just wanted to throw this out there and to say you know there's more than one way to skin a cat but this is the way I do it I find it to be very efficient I lose very little resources and uh, you know when I go back and check especially when I'm in lower leagues um, not so much in masters I just don't get attacked I use a farming base never get attacked never lose any resources I went multiple times with a full defense log 10 plus days with you know 40 attacks and not even a single one with more than a town hall snipe so um, 
highly recommend this method. Um, ditch your resources at night before you go to sleep. Use what you farm during the day to upgrade your highest level um, walls that you can. And uh, that's pretty much it, guys. So thanks for tuning in. Um, do focus on your walls. It makes a big difference. I've had several raids recently stall out at you know 90 plus percent just because a few troops could not get out of the core um, because I was dealing with lava walls. So um, highly recommend that you focus on the walls, um, get those up, and uh, best of luck doing so.